What is up? Glad you could join us. He, of course, is Matt Shepard. I'm Sean Belegian. Hope you all had a wonderful Easter. Uh, Shep, was it a good one for you? It was great. Anytime all the kids are here with their significant others, then my wife's happy. And if my wife's happy, the whole house is happy. So, yeah, I would say, yeah. How about you, buddy? Uh, I always buy jelly beans knowing full well my daughter won't eat them so i get extra jelly beans so that's Love a double that, right? for me i Love i can that. sit back and kind of chow on on jelly beans all day no it was great you know what it was just the three of us i think we're so accustomed to as you know i'm sure you are having tons and tons of people over usually we entertain this year it was just low key and it was it was awesome really really enjoyed it didn't didn't hurt that the tigers uh, finish a sweep of the woeful white Sox. i'm taking nothing away from the tigers but shep as we talked about last week that is a bad bad white Sox team yeah it is two three one run wins too um a lot of people will go ooh against a bad team i look at it like hey man you're on the road you found a way to win OK, I, I'm, I'm think you and I are similar in this regard. I, I don't apologize for winning. Screw never that. Never. You get a victory. I don't care where it's home or away. I don't care if you feel like it should have been more or a, 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 not quite as as close. It doesn't matter to me. All that matters is winning and moving on um, in every sport. Quite honestly, I don't think you look back and you go, hmm, you know what, Sean, on uh, March 31st, you know, the Tigers really should have lost that game to the White Sox. Who gives a crap? I mean, <laughs> you won three one-run games. You're 3-0. and oh. Not many teams can say that. It's the first time it's happened since 2016. Embrace it, love it, move on, and, and try to beat the Mets in New York before you come home to Oakland, who's, you know, playing in front of 3,000 people and uh, and a bad baseball team. Um, so you did what you're supposed to do. God love you. Uh, the bigger question is, what's your favorite jelly bean? I mean, if you're going to sit there and tell me about you get extra jelly beans, uh, come on, man. I mean, you got to give me more information than okay. that. So uh, I, I'm old school. I love the old school Brock's jelly beans. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the kids can't stand them. They, they, you know, they want all the flavor. They want all the, the Brock's jelly bean, like that white jelly bean is just fantastic. I, I don't know what's different about it. It just is. Okay. But I, I got a little Ronald Reagan in me. The jelly belly is tremendous. It's, it's, it's hard to deny the jelly belly. It's, I'm it's, with you on that. I, I like, I like the red ones. I do. I, I like the, the, the red jelly beans. That's okay. probably my favorite. Yeah. Isn't it great? I buy I buy the jelly beans for my daughter, knowing full well she's not going to eat one of them. She, yeah, I mean, you're just. I mean, you're not fooling anybody. If you don't think she knows that by now, you're crazy. Dad, why do you always buy me jelly beans? <laughs> hey, we we're just talking about this, Shep. Uh, the Tigers are, of, of course. Uh, in New York right now, taking on the Mets. And um, I think you know this, and for the benefit of people out there that don't, I've had the fortune of taking my son to a bunch of different baseball parks. I forget how many, 14, I don't, I don't know, whatever. The, the number's not important. But I really, I had a chance to go to Shea before it closed, and it was kind of a dump. Um, this this new park, City Field, is that what it is, I, if I'm not mistaken? City, yeah, City Field, yep. It is. I loved it. Shep, it was personally one of my favorites. I, I know my son put it at number two on his list. It It is the, the nice combination of modern amenities, and, and they have the one corner of the park that they kind of made almost in the triple a mode. And as a guy mm -hmm. that you've been to a few parks in, in, in your <laughs> lifetime, Shep, yeah. um, what, what did you think of that park? I it really, it was, it was number two, at least on my kids list. No, I liked it a lot. I, I would ask you if we only get this feel about baseball parks or do we have it about basketball arenas? Do we have it about football stadiums? Do we have it about hockey rinks? A, if if so, now that certain rinks are gone, whether it be Toronto or Montreal or Winnipeg, uh, Manitoba, which I think you and I have both been been up there to that. Bigger, um, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 do we just do we just feel it about baseball parks? I I I love going into older parks, but they need to be updated uh -huh. for me. And I like I the the going to Fenway is is pretty special. Uh, Pittsburgh is really sharp. My kids uh, but number I, one. Yeah, but I think that's because of when you're behind home plate and you're looking out and you see the river. Oh, 
I mean, there, I, I don't know if there's any better setting outside, maybe San Francisco. San Francisco is really, really nice, mm-hmm. but it's so damn cold there. Um, I like, I've always liked Kansas City's Kauffman Stadium. I think it's really undersold, but going to the old ballparks, Chavez Ravine is special. And there, there are certain places you go, Sean, where you, when you walk into the building, you're like, this is a baseball park. Yep. Chavez Ravine is that. Fenway is that. Wrigley is that, obviously. I really think Kaufman and Pittsburgh, you know, the, the, the big A is not bad. It's not great. I wouldn't put it in my, you know, my top eight, but it's, it's not a terrible ballpark. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, those are kind of the ones that really hit home for me. Um, but some of them, like, I, I don't think anything special at Yankee stadium. I don't think there's anything special there. Not at all. Didn't do we didn't enjoy it at all. It was I mean it was it was a nothing. It really what, what stadium have you not what stadium have you not been to that you want to go to? Kaufman. It's funny that's like number one. Number yeah. one. Uh you'll stadium. like it there. Safe really clean barbecue and the bar safe. let's face it, Kansas City barbecue. But um yeah, Safeco. Um really, really want to go there. Really um, nice. We're, we're going to Anaheim in June. We're going to go see okay. the Tigers out there the last week of right. June. So um, yeah. th- that's another one. But it's funny you mentioned Chavez Ravine because the thing that blows my mind is you you you, you drive into that park and mm-hmm. you're driving like through woods. It, it's it's crazy. I mean, you're you're driving through these woods or around this turn, and then all of a sudden there's this giant you know baseball park in the in the parking lot and everything. But I I like that. My son was too young to go to uh, Tiger Stadium, and the one thing he said to me about going to Chavez Ravine was, "This is what I envisioned Tiger Stadium to be." You know, and it it it's got that old school feel because it is an old park. But Shep, as you said, it's so important. If you're going to keep an old park around, you have to update it. You you do have to modernize it, it a, a little bit. I thought it was a real good mix of having that old school charm and 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 having that just that dash of of modernness, if you will. And I I really enjoyed. It. I like Chavez Ravine as well. Yeah, I I think not only do you have to update the amenities of the ballpark, and I think Dodger Stadium has done a wonderful job. It's the second oldest ballpark in the national league. I think it's the third oldest overall. I think it goes, you know, with Wrigley and Fenway or Fenway Wrigley and then Chavez Ravine, but you have to update things around it. So that's one of the many things that Wrigley did a really good job with. I think Wrigley field is overrated. I, it's not that I don't mind going there, but I think Wrigleyville is what makes it special. Okay. Personally. That's just my opinion. Um, Shep, do you know why I'm laughing right now? And you could see Blake's dumb face laughing. You and I have, uh, all the years I've known you, we've never had this conversation. What you just said is almost word for word what I say about Wrigley Field. Because Blake's one of those people that worship at at, at the altar of Wrigley. (laughs) I think because I heard so much about Wrigley Field. The yeah. first time I, I went, I almost expected like large bosom women to come out holding two <laughs> giant mugs of, of beer. Old style. Right, well, right. Yeah, right. Old style beer with like a plate of sausage because they made yeah. it sound like it was the closest thing to heaven. And I, like Blake, yeah. I mean, no disrespect. They see, look at he's mad at both of us. I was like, it, Shep, it's okay. It's not, it's not, yeah. it's not bad, but the way it's not Camelot on about Wrigley. It's like, right. I don't feel it. F- Fenway, I think is much, much better than Wrigley. Chavez is much, much better than Wrigley. And I would argue there are a number of other parks that I've already mentioned that I like better than Wrigley field. I, it's not that Wrigley stinks. It's just that I think it's, it's been hyped up so much for so long that I think it's, you almost, the expectations are tough to meet. I love Wrigley, <laughs> but also like you guys have experienced a lot more than I have, so I don't have nearly. Well, that as doesn't much. mean we're right. It doesn't no, mean we're no, right no. I, I, but, yeah, I'm just. I'm, how many times have you been there? Uh, three. Three. Have you sat in the same spot? No. So the first time Wait. I went, I sat first baseline, mm-hmm. and then I've sat in the bleachers twice. Yeah, I think it's really important. If you've got a feel for a ballpark, what I used to do when I would go to a ballpark, I would get there super early. 
you know, 115, 130. And I would, if I had never been there, I would walk it. And I would sit in different spots just to get an idea, get a feel for where um, fans would have a vantage point and enjoy it. Uh, there are certain ones that I didn't because I wasn't a big fan of the ballpark, period. All right. Like, who, who's going to go to Guaranteed Rate Field and walk it? Nobody. That place is a dump. Okay, it's terrible. The Metrodome, not great. But certain places, like Kaufman, I remember vividly going under the upper right, upper deck in right field and just looking down to see what kind of sense you would get if you were a fan. Really cool and not a bad sight line in the entire place. So I think a lot of it depends on your experiences, and I think a lot of it depends on your expectations. Yeah. But again, I think what makes Wrigley really cool is you can go down there. You know, the three of us could go down there, have a burger and a beer, walk across the street, boom, there you go. We're we're at Wrigley, and we're having a blast. I would also tell you, Sean and Blake, if you're going to go someplace, I would strongly recommend going to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. St. Louis, and this is the new Bush Stadium. Yeah. But right across the street is the Cardinals Hall of Fame. And Dan Petrie and I last year did a couple of opens to our to our broadcast from the Cardinals Hall of Fame. And we couldn't get enough of it. And yeah. I took some videos and I, I'll, I'll share it with you so you can share it with Jack. And I'll send it to you too, Blake, if you want. It's really special. Like it's it's exactly... I've said this forever, and I'm not saying it now because, you know, I don't, I don't call Tigers baseball. But the one thing that this area misses, what the Tigers have missed out on so far, doesn't mean they can't fix it. They should have a Tigers Hall of Fame. And they should have had one a long time ago. And quite honestly, and I've said this at nauseum, but I'll continue to say it. Sean's heard this rant before. There should be a Detroit Sports Hall of Fame downtown. Dan Gilbert, Chris Illich should give us a building, and I say that literally, three or four stories. Each story, if you've ever been to Cooperstown, there's different places where you can go. You should be able to go do some type of, you know, they, everybody's into this live stuff, and you, you, you're, you're not, uh, you know, go if you go to Chrysler Center, you can pretend like you're shooting a free throw, right? So you're doing those types of things. Maybe you're dribbling against Isaiah Thomas on one level. You're shooting a puck at... Mike Vernon or Chris Osgood or Dominic Hoshik on another level that might be the Red Wings level or the or the hockey uh, level. Uh, you should be able to throw a pass to you know Calvin Johnson just to see what it's like, right? Stand in there against Justin Verlander with with th this type of technology that they have these days, and they should have a college wing too. But the Tigers should have had a Tigers Hall of Fame for decades. Oh, how they don't is be. The God blessed Reds have one. Okay. And look, they, they've got great championships there. Don't get me wrong, and great players. But for the Tigers and the Detroit area, and at least the Tigers and Red Wings combined, you don't want to do it for the Pistons. Oh, okay, okay, whatever. The history of the Red Wings, for them not to have a Hall of Fame is borderline sacrilegious. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. A uh, couple comments. Uh, some people are talking about the greatness of Tiger Stadium. Hard to deny that. Yep. Uh, Jason said, I went to uh, Make Belief Gardens. It's final uh, season. Not a stadium to get drunk in. One misstep and you're tumbling from the nose bleeds to the glass and like three bounces because it was that steep. Had you been there, Sean? I had. Uh, okay. I went to the second to last game. I'd been there many times, but I went to the second to last game. I would, I would say that. And Olympia, being high up in Olympia, was straight down. Yep. And Chicago Stadium, if you were on that third level, right? If the wind blew hard, you might be over the 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 railing. I mean, that, yes, that's scary stuff. That was, yeah, I agree. I've been to Chicago Stadium as a, to to watch a hockey game, but also to call basketball games. I've been to Madison Square Garden, uh, which was way overrated until they updated it. Okay. First game I ever went to in New York, I went by myself and went to the Rangers Devils, and it was awesome. But that place was a pit. Yep. An absolute pit. There were rats behind the concession stand, and that's not an exaggeration. But when they updated it, and I went and called, I don't know if it was Michigan Villanova, Michigan Baylor during a regular season game, some type of tournament, they really did a nice job with it. So I give them a ton of credit for, for updating that. 
but it, it was long, long, long overdue. You know, since we, since you asked about rinks, I'll, I'll you know, obviously a Montreal Forum was great. Le Colisee yep. in Quebec was unbelievable. I'm telling you, it was just a really? different world. Mm-hmm. But in our state, I'm not joking. It is it is almost a religious experience to go up to Calumet into the Coliseum and to D Stadium, the quote birthplace of hockey in the United States, at D Stadium. Mm-hmm. You walk in there, and it, I. I I know it sounds cheesy. I know it sounds cliche. It smells of hockey. It it's just great. does. It, it's a yeah. hundred years of, of raw stench hockey bags, you know, all, all mm-hmm. in, in every fiber of the building. It just smells like it smells like hockey. It's such a phenomenal thing, but it's little places like that Shep that now yeah. kind of give me the wow factor. If that makes sense. It's, it's absolutely just like that, that make me go, whoa. Cause I, you know, maybe I've been fortunate. I've been there, done that with so many of the, the big venues, but um, they, you know, little places like that with so much history in them that somehow, some way they continue to, to stay open and, yeah. and put out, you know, an unbelievable uh, sheet of ice, those are the things that get me going, you know? I, I don't think it has to be – it doesn't have to house a professional team for it to be special. Yeah. Um, I remember I called a couple of games in Lake Placid. Oh. Where they won – you know, where Team USA won gold medal and they beat the Russians. I was blown away, A, at how small it was, and B, where the broadcast booth was. Absolutely blown away. But just to be there. I, I got chills up and down my spine just being in that in that building, knowing what historical event took place in that. So sometimes it's not necessarily the biggest places, and sometimes it's not always a professional venue. Sometimes it's the smaller places, yeah. I think, that really make it special. Have you guys, either of you, been to either Nashville or Vancouver? Been to Nashville, not Vancouver. The same the, the exact same. You know, it's funny when uh, the Whalers went to the Memorial Cup uh, back in 07, Shep, I had to do television. The Wings were in the conference finals against Anaheim. So unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to go. But no, I I, I want to go. I just hear it's just a great city, period, end of story. And I haven't been out that way. Yeah, I would love to go to Vancouver. I have never been there. I've been to every baseball park except for one, Blake, and that's San Diego. And I heard that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's the only one I haven't been to. I've been to every football stadium uh, except for like the new Minnesota, uh, new Atlanta and Las Vegas hockey. I've, I've been to as many um, and basketball. I've been to every basketball arena, unless it's sprouted up in the last three years. So you have been like golden States new arena, obviously. No, I was at their old arena in Oakland. Yeah. Um, but not in their new one. Yeah. What about what about the college football stadiums? I would say LSU is probably the I mean, obviously Michigan, Ohio State. I've been to all the Big Tens. Uh, but LSU is pretty cool. Uh and Florida's not bad either. But there's Oxford. a lot of places I've like I'd love to go to Alabama. I'd love mm-hmm. to go to Auburn. Um I I I'd never I I'd love to go to Georgia. I'd love to go to some of those SEC venues, but I've never been. I'm, I'm telling you, I've said this, Blake. I know I've said this to you, and I've probably said this on the air a thousand times over the years. If you fancy yourself a college football fan, I don't care what your feelings are about Notre Dame. You've got to go to Notre Dame Stadium. Yeah. There's yeah, it's just special. It's special. It just yeah. you walk around the stadium, go down to the grotto. Take it all in. I, those people know what they're doing down there, and the customer service is second to none. It really is. They yeah. must take a class or something, how to be nice to human beings, because, I mean, they're just all wonderful people. I would add this. Go to West Point Ooh. and walk around there. I, I get the whole, oh, it's, it's not a big-time school. You go to uh, Mikey Stadium, and you watch them perform on that field with the river right behind it. But more importantly, the walk that you have around that entire area will give you chills. Mm. It's special. It's really special. I've been fortunate. I've been there and the Naval Academy to call so cool. games. Both very cool. The coolest thing about the Naval Academy is when they all come in and they're dressed whites. Yeah. At, at Army, just going to different hills where they were getting ready for whatever battle it may be. And reading the the history that is just 
entrenched in that whole region is awesome. You'll love it. Mm. This is a good one. Uh, Brett sends us uh, Tennessee would be my non-Big Ten football venue. That's a good one. That's I'd a, like I wanna, to go see that. That's on my list. I want to go yeah. there bad. I'm to it. Blake, I've told you um, Oxford would blow your mind. And and mm-hmm. it was funny because I saw Kirk Herbstreit made a list of places you have to go, and he actually – included Oxford and Shep. It's a lot, as you said, not so much the stadium, but the surroundings of the stadium. You know, when you were talking about yeah. Wrigley, Wrigleyville to me is the show. Wrigleyville yeah. is the show. And I would say the same thing about uh, Oxford at Vaught Hemingway stadium, I think is the name of the stadium, but it's the Grove. That's the show. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the tailgate out there and all these double wides and these people grilling and smoking <laughs> is unbelievable. Unbelievable. You're not talking, you're not talking Oxford, Ohio. No, Oxford, Mississippi. It's a different world down there. It's a different world down Sean, there. Listen to this, man. I, I did a game at Louisiana Tech. All I right. There, no, probably. no, no, no. I'm sorry. Louisiana Monroe, the Raging Cajuns, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And as I'm walking in to the stadium, there are people outside with, I don't know if it was Wild Animal Day or what. <laughs> and this person's got this this yellow boa constrictor around their neck asking if people want to feed it or see it. And then there's this animal and this animal and this animal. And I'm going, are we at a zoo or are we at a, at a stadium to come watch a football game? But the jambalaya there, Oh, I'm telling you something. I was at Louisiana tech and that was, it's, it's a different world. Uh, Rust in Louisiana. It's a different, different. I could have, I listen, I'd become a millionaire if I invited them all to the Legion four double lot. The shock but go around the dryer. Hey, Dave. Listen, can I talk about legacy for a second? Uh, <laughs> did you know that thousands of contractors have already called legacy <laughs> partners to get help with their home and auto insurance? It never gets old. It never gets old. Our friends at Legacy Partners are one of Southeast Michigan's top oh. independent insurance agents, and they provide a full service one stop solution for all your insurance needs, personal, business, large, and small. The boys are going to be out there at Batch on Friday. Can't wait to see them. You get a chance to talk to them, put them to the test. Go talk to Joe or Alex or Dave. They're going to take care of you because they have helped many people out there. By fixing mistakes other agents have made, asking the right questions to get the right coverage put in place to properly protect you and save you money. Chances are, if you haven't checked your policies in the last year, you're paying too much and you could also be underassured. What are you waiting for? Give these guys a chance to help with your home, your cars, life insurance, Medicare enrollment, or your business insurance needs. Honestly, Give them a call. Get your quota. You've got nothing to lose. Call them today, 586-209-4106, or visit LegacyPartnersINS.com to get started with your new quotes. Uh, Kirk Hunter also gave me a thumbs up to the D in Houghton. Uh, Unbelievable history up there right on the canal in in Houghton. Jason said, Sean still doesn't know what Calumet Arena looks like because if you're there in the winter, it's under six feet of snow. The Coliseum is (laughs) unbelievable up there, but he's not wrong about that. As for stadiums, I didn't go till I was older. Walking into the big house in Joe Lewis Arena the first time took my breath away due to my personal love for the teams. I have said this a thousand times, and I'll make it a thousand one. Um, I understand the emotional attachment to Joe Lewis. That place was an absolute dump. It was a dump. It was just, it was a dump. And but it was our dump, Sean. That's what I always say about the Silver Dome. Like, it's, it, that place was just this giant cement blob out in the middle of the Silver Dome. But I got to play tackle football on gravel. I mean, come on. That was that was my dump. And I, I, wore, I wore those wounds on my leg like a, like a badge of honor. But, Shep, it was so funny. You, I think we're probably past enough time now. If you privately talk to any Red Wing of years gone by, they would tell you privately what a dump Joe Louis Arena was. And, and I think that was a big reason because you would go to other ranks and you would see – just the the modern amenities that the players right. had at their right. disposal, and then you came to Joe Lewis Arena, and you, I mean, night and day, the place was a dump. It had to go. Yeah, I I don't disagree at all, and I think most players would say the same. But there is a feel 
about that place. Sure. Um, Jason is pretty dead on when he says when you walk in that place, it screams hockey. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you in interviewing numerous visiting players, the thing that always put them in awe was as soon as they hit the ice, they would always look up and they would see all the banners in all the names. And they just felt like it was where hockey is supposed to be played. With that said, they couldn't believe how small the locker rooms were and how minuscule the weight room was. Yeah. So those, and especially hockey players, you know this, when they, they work out after games, they work out after practices. They're on the treadmill. They're on the bike. They're lifting weights after they're done. When you don't have a whole lot of room, I mean, I'll never forget Dominic Hasek saying to me one time, I can't leave knowing, because his, his locker was right here and the exit was just to his right. But the Red Wings weight room was right over here. Yeah. And Hasek said, I can't, you can't in good conscience leave knowing all these guys who have won cups before me and have set a standard of excellence are in there working out. Yep. And that dude had the body of, you know, a little chicken. I mean, it, it was, it, it, it's not what you, what you thought any type of professional athlete would be, but he would go over there because it was so close. That's a little different now at little Caesars, little Caesars arena by far and away. It's one of the nicest arenas in the country. I love it. I really do. I, I, I do too. Arena. I mean, I, 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 I think they did it right. Yeah. Um, but Joe Lewis Arena did scream hockey, whereas I think a Little Caesars, as a multi-purpose facility, doesn't have that same type of feel, even no. though it's a better place. Jason said, I agree. It was a dump. It was 100% emotional attachment. Oh, absolutely. That's Listen, okay. Yeah, ab absolutely. Was Blake, the, you're, you're a big college it? football fan, Blake. W yeah. What What's the best place you've been to? The Swamp. Besides, I mean, I without bias, like I the big house is incredible, obviously. It's unbelievable. Like, but I don't uh, care who you root for, it's unbelievable. I I actually caught a spring practice at the swamp on my senior year trip. I was hmm. going down through there to Miami f to go on a cruise, and we stopped in Gainesville, and it was the year after Tebow had left. Hmm. And they had Charlie Weiss practicing. I met Charlie Weiss down on the field, but their spring practices were completely open. So wow. I got to like tour the entire stadium and everything empty, which was it was so cool. It was awesome. You're, yeah, you know, I, I would, I would, I, I, I've been there. I've called a game there. I, I think it's pretty cool. I think Arkansas and the SEC of the stadiums I've been to, I think Arkansas is better. I think LSU is much better. You'll like you would really like LSU. LSU, there, there's a magic's too strong of a word, but there's there's some type of pixie dust when you walk around LSU. Something like you, there's something my, you're feeling there. Agreed. My plan is my goal is so LSU's playing a home and home with Clemson in I think two years. And I want to try and go to both. Go. That's go, the goal. dude. I mean, get some buddies and enjoy. I mean, live it up. That is, I, I would strongly recommend taking a trip down there with some pals. And I'm telling you right now, when you go to LSU, as long as you don't root for Alabama, they'll welcome you at every tailgate you step by. Totally. H hand you free food, too. Really, they will. They'll, they'll hand you. And it's amazing. The second the game starts, the all these people that are out in the parking lot acting like the nicest human beings, all of a sudden, they get that look like it's race yeah. time. You know, all of a sudden the buck teeth, they come out. It is a Yankee feller. Oh, Yankee. You know, and then you, you're on your own at that point in time. So I think, and, and Sean, you didn't uh, mention my, my work history, but like you were supposed to, but I think Lomas has taken me to a game at the swamp this year. Oh, isn't that nice? That was a We've game been... I was supposed to be going to. Isn't that? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey. <laughs> Sean, Sean that's while you awesome. get that knife out of your back, how that's about what Jason awesome. said? Jason got a chance to play in Lake Placid for Morrisville, St. Barn, as Isn't the miracle awesome? on ice happened. Good for him. God, oh, I, hope, 
all, all I hope is that Jason got a, a lot of pictures and I, I hope he shares those stories with as many people as he possibly can. Cause that's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, Chris, nice to see you. And he said, it's what my grandpa said about the Olympia. Yeah, it was, oh. um, I was very young. Gosh, I think I was eight. And I just, this, I mean, it, it was really, it was that steep. By the way, did I mention Blake is courtesy of the Mitch album show on 760 WJR and sports rap on WJR? Thanks, Wow. That's that's all right. working with us. Shep, what did you <laughs> Shep, what did you think of the Rose Bowl? Because um, you know, we were talking I've early. never been there. Oh, really? Oh, oh wow. I've never been there. No, no, no. My right. son says it's unbelievable. He's been there. I've never been there. It's one of those places I'd love to go. See, I've never I was been there. I was gonna bring up the same the same conversation that we had about Wrigley. I mean, you hear so much about it mm -hmm. that that mm -hmm. Wrigley was never gonna live up to those expectations. Um to me, the Rose Bowl exceeded them by a mile. Everything that I heard really? in that thing, wow. you know, the, the sun coming down over the mountains yeah. and everything, it, what you see, what you hear doesn't do it justice. It really, it was, it was, and it might be, you know, Michigan State's first Rose Bowl since 1988, whatever the case may be. That might be a huge emotional part of it. But um, I, I'm telling you, that walk through a neighborhood. I mean, it's like you're walking down the street and then all of a sudden you, you kind of veer to the left and, Oh, cool. There's the Rose Bowl. I've seen that building 50,000 times in my life. It's, it's just, it's, it's one of those <gasps> kind of moments, you know, it's a great experience. Uh, that's another place you get an opportunity to go there. And unfortunately the way that college football has changed, I don't know if maybe future generations are going to have that romantic attachment to a place like the Rose Bowl, like we have had. Yeah, that's you know that's a really good way to describe it. It really is. It's a romantic attachment. I've I, I didn't grow up a you know a Kansas basketball fan or a Duke basketball fan or a UCLA basketball fan, but I will say going into Fog Allen, broadcasting from Fog Allen, broadcasting from Pauley Pavilion at UCLA, Cameron Indoor, those were really cool places to go to. Certain college campuses have buildings i think breslin's awesome but i would have loved to have been at jenison mm -hmm. because i mm -hmm. think that place reeks of basketball it was okay yeah I, I, so that that was that was pretty special right um and i've never broadcast from there i've been there but i never broadcast from there certain places collegiately um professionally make me go i want to be there you know what i mean and and that's why i love your romantic discussion or your romantic uh, uh um I, you know, attachment definition. yeah it's perfect it's yeah. perfect because th those are some of the places that you always dream of being now i would say this like cameron indoor it's not real big it's very clean it's very sharp you broadcast from a crow's nest that's where you end up you're looking down Terry Mills and I were up there and I've been there a number of times, but Terry's six eleven. He, I, I was afraid he wouldn't be able to broadcast from there. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, that's, how's, the, how's assembly hall at Indiana? Yeah. Um, it's one of my, I, I think it's a really cool place, but it's one of my least place favorite places to broadcast from because you're at a table mid court. Where okay, so you got the visiting bench and the home bench, then the scorers table, your mid court, and you're sitting in plastic chairs at a plastic table, and I think it's really cheap looking and cheap feeling, and there's no room. So this is strictly from a selfish standpoint, mm -hmm. strictly from a selfish broadcasting standpoint. I hated broadcasting from there. The reason I say Indiana is because Assembly Hall in Illinois is what it used to be called too. Yeah. And I enjoy broadcasting from there. I enjoy broadcasting from MSU because you're on the floor. Iowa, yeah. you're on the floor. Yeah. Purdue, you're on the floor. Northwestern, you're on the floor. Why Ohio State and Indiana and places like that and Michigan force you up for you know expensive seats really kind of bothered me. And I remember talking to people in Michigan when they were redoing Chrysler and they said, where do you think the best place to broadcast from is? And I said, the thing about basketball, unlike any other sport, is the proximity to the action. What you love most about broadcasting basketball is how close you are 
to the players and the action that is taking place. I said, on the floor. They moved us up and in the corner. Could not have been further away. <laughs> it's, it's one of the worst vantage points you can ever imagine. And a part of the problem, too, is because, as you can see now in basketball, and by the way, more NBA teams are doing this, but what you can see in basketball is many referees are going to look at vi video replay. And what do they do? They explain it to the television broadcasters, but they don't tell, explain it to the radio broadcasters. Mm -hmm. And I said that to a referee one time. I said, hey, just out of curiosity, I was doing basketball on TV. And I said, just out of curiosity, how come you never tell the radio guys this? And he looked at me and I said, because they're broadcasting too, you know. Yeah, said, and there's no visual how, element. How are they supposed to know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Radio broadcasters do not have, for the most part, do not have a video replay of it. Yep. They have a score monitor or a stat monitor, but they don't have a video replay. Television does for, I mean, uh, radio and, and baseball does. I mean, the, the, who's ever calling on the radio for whatever team, they've got the monitor booth of the home team broadcast telecast. Yeah. Basketball, that's not the way it works. Uh, I, I, in hockey, hockey, I think you do have a, uh, have a, uh, a television feed you do. and football you do too. Yep. But you, do. you don't in basketball. Uh, Kirk Hunter said Fenway. I will echo that lived up to the expectations and then some, it was neighborhood and stadium. I, mm -hmm. Both, both were true. Boston garden on the other hand was an absolute shithole. And yes, I swore, and yes, I'll probably get yelled at for it, but I'll say it again. It was a shithole. And if you ask anybody in Boston, it took a few years for them to admit it. It was uh, like you talked about earlier, Shep, a rat infested shithole. I mean, it really yeah. was. It was just, it had to go. And I know they cried and, and whined, but I think they know it had to go. Is uh, it the worst? Well, I, boy, that's, that's a tough one. The, the biggest piece of garbage I was ever at was Stade Olympique in Montreal. Like how they played baseball there was unbelievable. I mean, it was, it was a crumbling giant piece of rock i mean it was it was a crappy place during the 76 olympics for them to play baseball in that building for yeah. another 20 plus years was it was it was gross it was unbelievable in terms of hockey rinks yes the boston garden was awful and you know it's kind of funny because i i gotta give i don't read a lot of bill simmons but bill simmons has made comments about what a crappy place it was but you know of course it was their crappy pay place and i respect that right TD um, Garden's not bad though. I've no, been there. Not at all. I, I, yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Uh, Brett said the Coliseum uh, is something I want to experience as well. If I ever go to the West Coast for a game with Michigan, I I want to be at a place where the Olympics have been played once. Uh, That's cool. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I always I regret I didn't go to the Orange Bowl, Shep, because of the those same reasons. Like for us growing up, Blake, this In is Miami. You're saying? Story. Yeah, I I yeah. Whether it be the four o'clock game in Miami with with you know Dick Enberg and Merlin Olson calling it, or you know the <laughs> Orange Bowl game itself on on New Year's Eve, uh, there was just something you know for me as a big fan, there was just something so cool about watching it get dusk in Florida and everything. I regret never seeing a game at the Orange Bowl. I I really wish I would have had a chance to see a game there. Yeah. Red River Shootout is is one that I'd like to go to too. Yeah, that's, that's on my one. list too. Yeah. Oh, Rich, I couldn't agree with you more. Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. It was a crap hole. Absolute. And uh, for the football game, Shep, I don't know if you ever, quote unquote, covered anything there. Um, for the overflow media, they would put you like out in the bullpen, like facing the lake. And that wind comes off the lake, and I don't care if it's a 65-degree day, it is minus 5,222 degrees in that bullpen. You yeah. know, I'm some little idiot from Toledo shivering like this the first week of September in 1995, but telling everybody, hey, I covered a Cleveland Brown game. You know, yeah. It was awful, just a crap hole, absolutely. Yeah, I, I've never been outdoors in that situation, but I, I've been in Cleveland for that Um for an event there um and then their new ballpark and new stadium i have not been to the new brown stadium um that i can recall no i did i did do a game there i did do a lions preseason game there um and it was okay 
It, it didn't make me go, oh, no, this, see, they did this right. There are very few places where I walk into, like, I've never been to San Diego or, I mean, uh, L.A. for the Rams and the Chargers, mm -hmm. but I hear nothing but unbelievable things about that. I've been to Dallas for Lions, Cowboys, and for other events. Jerry's world is pretty awesome. That's what it I've really heard. is. Yeah. Yeah. It's special. You know what the best part about the Ram Stadium is? What's that? The owner actually paid for it instead of the people. So I, I like that one a lot. <laughs> you know, like taxpayer the dollars. By like the way, I've still yeah, never been to Lambo. Davidson did that with the pals. Yeah, he did. Good call. Good call. I've still yeah. never been to Lambo. Um, I always said if I oh. go, I want to go as a fan. I don't want to go as a member okay. of the media. I just don't. Sean, I don't. Sean, trust me when I tell you this. Uh, you and Jack gotta go. Yeah, you, you gotta go. I, whether you like the Packers or not, you and I both don't like Packers. It's still, it is an awesome place. So there are. I say this to people all the time. You want to go to a ballpark? You and I have already talked about that. You know, whether it be Boston or or, or Chavez Ravine, you want to go to a football stadium. There's no doubt what number one is. That's awesome. No doubt. Yeah, it is so much better. Like Soldier Field is. Uh, Hated you know, it. Yeah what they've done to Lambo and how they've helped it and how they made it better, even though it's that old is pretty special. What they yeah. were able to do with that. I give them a ton of credit because when you walk in that place, Sean, you, it's all about the Packers and that's the way it should be. I think, Absolutely. I mean, I, I think it's all about green Bay. It's all about the love for that community. And it's all about the love for that entire franchise. It is really cool. You, you will not regret if you go there, I don't give a crap if there's nothing to do. We used to stay in Appleton when I was doing lines. We'd stay in Appleton and you drive about 30 minutes to Green Bay. So we didn't necessarily stay in Green Bay. So what? When you go in there and you see that place and you walk around that place, it's incredible what they do to that. And they're so happy and nice up there. Like everybody's happy and nice. Would you like a brat? Yeah, I mean, it's it's incredible. Mm. Hey, listen, I got to tell you about our friends at Wealth Advantage Group. Uh, there they are. Look at those handsome fellas. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? Well, look no further than the Wealth Advantage Group, located in historic downtown Northville, owned by two brothers with over 20 years of industry experience. They understand that your financial goals are as unique as you are. That's why they offer personalized expert guidance to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning. Now, whether you're saving for retirement, getting ready to sell your company, or are already in retirement, they can help guide you through every step of your financial journey. They work with clients throughout all stages of life and have clients in over 20 states. States. The investment world is a complex one. So if you're ready to start taking your finances more seriously, it might be time to work with a couple of experts. Reach out to my buddies right there, the Handsome Brothers at Wealth Advantage Group, 248-773-8574, or view their website at www.thewealthadv.com. Jason, this is pretty cool. If you were a visitor to the Manistique Ice Arena, they put you in the lockers right next to their wood stoves that heated the arena. You can't put a price tag on things like that, man. Awesome. You can't put a price tag on things yeah. like that. Uh, Shep, what did you think of the uh, the game, Michigan-Michigan State? I think it's great for hockey. Obviously, I did not like the outcome. I did not like the outcome one bit, but congratulations to, to Brandon Narado and the Michigan Wolverines for punching the ticket to the Frozen Four. I think you and I talked about this last week that hockey does a crappy job of promoting oneself. Mm -hmm. They had a really good opportunity with all the overtime games. This was a hell of a tournament, folks. Mm -hmm. This college hockey tournament was awesome. How it's played on the same weekend uh, of college NCAA tournament is ridiculous to me. Um, you can't find it outside of a school's website. You can't find it, uh, information on it. And it's really too bad because BC is there, BU is there, Michigan is there and Denver is there. Mm -hmm. Michigan, I believe it's 28 times in the Frozen Four, most in history. BC is second, I think, 25. BU, 23. Denver, 19, I believe. Denver, I think, is sixth. But Michigan, BC, and BU, those are the top three programs to be in the Frozen Four, and they're all there. In other words, Sean, 
it is blue blood territory. It would be like Duke, North Carolina, and Kentucky yeah. being in the final four at the same time. That's the equivalent of it. I would say this. I thought from what I watched, BC was the most impressive team that I watched. I thought Michigan looked so much faster than North Dakota, which surprises me because North Dakota is really good historically and this year. And I worried, you and I talked about this last week. I worried a little bit about Trey Augustine. I didn't think he looked great in the Big Ten championship game. And yet he was named player of the tournament in the Big Ten. And that surprised me. He gave up four goals. How many of the goals he gave up to Michigan in the 5-2 loss were on him? You would know better than I. I thought there were two he should have had. I thought Michigan had just a little bit more of a purpose in the third period. Um, 100%. But it, but it really was a, a really good for the most part, a really good game to watch. I think Michigan State made the mistake you can't make against a team as talented as Michigan, um, especially with their power play. Um, you, you let you, the emotions get the best of you, and you start taking dumb penalties. And I think one of the dumbest things people can say, in my mind, Shep, and I, I know you've followed a lot of hockey and called a lot of hockey, if somebody says, well, you got to remember, they only converted once. Okay, it's not that. Do, do you know what it is? you are gassing out some of the top players on your team, the guys that have right. to play shorthanded. You're gassing those guys out, constantly asking them to go out and kill penalties um, over and over and over. By the time the third period rolls around, there's, there's, you know, I mean, think about of a gas tank, you know, yeah. you, you've, you've used a lot of extra gas, you know, maybe putting your, your pedal to the metal and, and going 80 miles an hour instead of doing 70 miles an hour. And, uh, Michigan, in my mind, wore them out. I think Michigan stayed the course, and Michigan State nothing to hang their head about. This was this was a oh. fantastic season, Big Ten championship, oh, yeah. uh, the the playoff championship, tourney championship. Obviously, um, I'm going to say it again. I'm glad that this appears appears being the key operative word to be something to keep an eye on and to get real excited about over the next few years. Shep. Oh, there's no question this year is going to help them, uh, yeah. you know, with 31 wins, a big 10 championship, um, a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. I, I, I'll say this. I thought West and West, somebody just on in the chat said, uh, MSU is the better team overall. They won more games. Uh, I thought I watched Chavon. I thought they were the better team in two of those games for certain. I thought Western outplayed them. They did in the NCAA tournament. They did. So I, I don't, I, I, I'm not a big believer in like, well, they're, you know, they're the better team overall. They had the better resume. There's no question. It's really hard to beat a team. What did they beat them? Um, one, two. They beat them five times during the regular four season. They, they beat. They were four and two against Michigan. Four. Oh, and they, two. they were four and two. Okay, yeah. four and two. Um, I, I had forgotten Michigan had beaten them a couple times. Well, um, that was the second time. That was they beat him the first time and the last time, as as fate would have it. You know. Oh, they beat they did beat him the first time. Okay, yeah. thank you for that. So I thought, um, you know, I, I, Michigan speed. I oftentimes I think is evident. It doesn't mean that they always win. What's interesting about this situation is Michigan State, even though losing, most people would suggest it's a successful season because of from which they came. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You may disagree with that, but I think a lot of people feel like, look, this is a really good season for Michigan State. Puts them back on the proverbial map, the Big Ten title, as we mentioned, a number one seed. For Michigan, if they don't win at all, it's still not a very good season. This is their third straight trip to the Frozen Four. Yeah, They haven't won a championship since 98. They're hanging their hat on nine national championships, which I believe is tied for the most. Um, but it's 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 time you 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 actually kick that door in. Their hard part now is going to be they, they play probably the best team in the country in, in Boston College, and I think Boston College is the best team in the country. There's a lot of talent that's going to be on the ice between those two teams. My goodness gracious. Is, is... How, how many how many draft picks do they each have? Oh, boy. If I, I It's not uncommon to see a lot of college teams with 12 or 13 mm -hmm. NHL draft picks Absolutely. on their roster. Absolutely. That, that BC team's a wagon. Uh, Shep, I think you bring up a great point because I think a lot of times in sports, you're victims of your own expectations. Uh, Blake, I, I told you in November before, uh, you know, I got fired from that station we were working at. Um, I, I told you, Blake, remember I told you, I said, listen, I, the way Michigan state is playing, 
I expect Michigan State to get to the frozen four. Do you remember? I told you that back in November. You know, mm. I, they, yep. but but am I disappointed they came one step short? No. No, but I, I really, Shep, I'm telling you right now, I, I did. I thought they were going to the frozen four. And, you know, the the one thing you have to say about Coach Nightingale is, he, you know, he's he's got, you know, the young team now. Uh, everybody knows how young they are. So yeah. many returning guys and so many guys that are on the cusp as well. Listen, we only got a couple minutes, but. Real, real quick before you oh, do that, right. can I say something? You interrupt more than any human I know. I was. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. You know what? Well... <laughs> go ahead i'm joking dude if go everyone on. watching out there could please like the video and subscribe it helps us it helps more people find us oh really yeah that's how it works that's why we tell people to like the video thank you so really? if, uh, there's only Does mitch there's... tell you to say that too N no okay. <laughs> now i'm getting it from both ends there's 200 people watching this right now and there's only seven people that have liked the video. There oh, should be a that. That'd be really nice if you. Yeah, could. it would be nice, and it would no, help us grow. I, yeah, thank you. So I was just if, trying to help. If us. you do, if you do like it, yeah. No, if you do like it, I hope you like it. If you don't like it, then uh, let us know that too. So we can yeah. Get things. Yeah, you you know what I would do. I I if I could give you a dial tone, I give you a dial tone. If you don't like it, what the hell are you doing watching this? What's we can put we can put that button on your get phone. out of here. Like you can give you a video, don't button. you have video games to play? Yeah. <laughs> Kirk said, I like you guys. Thank you. Hey, you know what? Friday, we are going to be at a very special place for a special day. It is the Tigers home opener. So if you can make it, you're looking for a place to hang out. Why don't you come join us in Corktown? That's right. Batch Brewing Company. They're going to have specials going on all day. Listen to me. Check out the menu. I did, you guys can have your little craft beer and stuff like that. I'm telling you chicken jerk sausage are you kidding me how good does that sound i defy you to deny that you're, you're, you're gonna, gonna have to fight sean for it is what you're gonna have to do absolutely. you want to fight me you want to fight him brewingcompany.com specials going on all day on friday uh we'll be broadcasting out there from 10 30 to noon we'd love to see you out there as well at as at batch brewing company uh, Chris said dial tone during prick three. Okay, there's another one. <laughs> Way to pull that one out of the hat. Oh, that was an oldie but a beauty. It that was. was a beauty. It was. There were so, some of those were really fun, man. I mean, seriously. Prick three was good. We had one in the morning where it was defending the indefensible. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, God, that was, that was fun. That Most was... of the things that came out of Greg Brady's pie hole, right? That was that was something well, that, yeah. defending, defending well, the indefensible. Yeah, yeah. That's the, the, Brady. there's a reason he was on one end of it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Shep, any final thoughts before we get out of here? No, brother. It's great to visit with you. And I'm glad you and the family had a good Easter. And Blake, you, always well. to have you in there, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate it. About time someone said not, something nice about me tonight. Oh yeah. my gosh. Is this hey, thanks to Todd too? Todd's yeah. just shaking his head the whole time, going, I gotta go to work. Todd has to put up with this, you know, tomfoolery on a on a nightly basis. Are you kidding me? What a joke. Tom I'm gonna foolery. go do dishes. All right. <laughs> Nineteen to do dishes. Who called and wants Tom Foolery back? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, have yourselves a great night. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. For Shep and Blake and Todd, I'm Sean. See you.